Brandy Hayes, I want to welcome you to the show, Sports Hip Hop with DJ Mad Max, Light 365, iHeartRadio. We have Chino Hills on joining me here on the show here tonight to talk about her newest project, where we left off, and we're going to get right to it. How have you been? Welcome to the show. I'm good. I'm good. What about you? How have you been? I've been doing all right, but I, I checked out the new project, and I'm, I'm always looking for new artists, especially R&B artists, because we're, we live in the hip-hop era right now, so everyone's right. always constantly looking for the hip-hop music, so I'm always looking for R&B, and I'm even going to be looking for other genres right now just to just broaden the demographic of people that I've had on my show, but congratulations on everything that you've achieved this far. Rich by 30 Records, is that your label? Yeah, that's my label. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's just me. <laughs> You're independent, so... We're going to get into the whole story here, but what does it take to be your own boss in this era, especially in the, because we're basically in the independent era of music right now. So what does it take to be your own successful boss? Man, um, I mean, for me, it's like, I do a lot. So, you know, like most of the time I'm, I'm recording myself, I'm writing my songs, I'm mixing myself. I edit my videos, I direct my videos, I create my own marketing strategy, I pay for everything. So, you know, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you went to school out in Georgia, so you majored in economics and all that and marketing, minored in marketing too. Yeah, I did. I did. How was that learning about that? And with learning from what you learned in school, now you've seen the difference. Yeah. I mean, I was always good at marketing. I always loved marketing. Um, my school, I went to Spelman, so they only have specific majors. So that wasn't a major I could like select, but I was just kind of like, it was always a big interest of mine. I always loved it. And it definitely comes in handy. I mean, you know, having just plans, but it's, it's all about how you use it and, and how you use your resources, I guess. <laughs> so how was the move from being originally from Chino Hills and, and going out to Georgia? How was that transition for you? I loved it. I loved being in Atlanta. Um, it's not necessarily the same now because, you know, I was there in college with all the college kids and then we all like, you know, so it's, it's a little different now because my friends aren't there, but I still love Atlanta. Um, I love Atlanta, but there's no place like LA. <laughs> no, that's for sure. It, you've had your time just learning about when you find your calling because you always wanted to be a singer at the age of two, I believe, was when I, I was doing my research. And your yeah. calling came from when you had your first job as a, a data analyst. Is that what it was in Jersey? I did. I did. I don't even know where you found this information. But yeah, <laughs> I, did. I did. I did. I worked at the company for like a year. And then I was like, this is, this is not for me. <laughs> this, is, this isn't it. I was like, this isn't it. And so I just like, I was like, I'm going to go back to California and I'm going to do this music thing. And that's what I, what I strive to do. <laughs> And going out to Jersey, so how was it, especially learning from from your job at that point and, and now learning the, the grind that I'm quitting my job and now I'm going to take this on full time. So what were the moves that you had to prepare to get back to L.A.? And, and when you, once you got back out there, it was the full hustler mindset. Um, So definitely not something that I would like recommend because uh, <laughs> I, I didn't have a plan. There wasn't like a, oh, I'm just going to. Nah, it was like a nope. I'm putting in these two weeks and I'm I'm out. Like as soon as my lease was up, I was like, "Yep, this is time to put in my two weeks. I'm leaving." Uh, so I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and I also had like a different perspective. I thought I was gonna be able to come here and then like everybody was gonna wanna kind of do stuff for me and I because I could sing and they were just gonna wanna write my songs and wanna produce for me and then like it was that was it. But I had to learn that like no, it takes a lot of work by yourself. And we've seen you accomplish so, so much on your own. Have you thought about potentially, because you're doing everything yourself right now, have you potentially thought about getting your own team together eventually, or is everything working out how you want it to be right now? Um, I would love to have my own team. I think for me, it's just kind of like, especially being in LA, you're kind of a small fish in a big pond and everybody's trying to get to like the, the larger people. But I do have some people in my corner and some people I always call um, from like videographers, uh, I do have a PR, you know, so I do have some people around me, but I don't necessarily have like a team team, but I just say like, you know, eventually it'll come. Especially even a manager, are you a little leery because of the things that happen when you hear stories like TLC, especially with signing the major labels, you kind of got to watch who manages you. I honestly haven't had that many approaches or that many um, conversations with the managers. I, I have come up 
I have I have talked to a few people, but like sometimes not everybody can help you more than you're helping yourself. So it was just kind of like one of those things where I have to decipher like what it is they could do for me versus like what I'm already kind of doing, you know. In in this early stage, because you were in a choir and in a group in, in preschool and elementary, so when did you think the fundamentals really started to kick in there in which people started to realize that you had talent? Because you told your parents that you wanted to be a singer and they were supportive of you, but they kind of looked at it as just a hobby. So when did the people around you start to realize that you had a gift? Um, I think it was it was always it was always there. Like I, I did sing in church choir and stuff like that too. Um, so I think everybody knew, I think I, I, I told everybody since like the age of two, like, that's what I'm going to do. I don't think that they necessarily believed me, but like that, I, I think they always kind of knew. And a lot of people would always tell me, you know, keep going. And, and so, yeah, I just, I started taking it serious. Like as soon as I got out of college. What's something that you noticed from taking even private lessons? I heard that you took your own lessons outside of the choir. So what's something that you learned from those lessons? Because when we look at the great singers, I don't care who it is from the beginning of time. Some people say it's it's a natural born gift that you have. It's a gift that you're born with. So what's something that if you wanted to become a great singer that you could really take away from these lessons? Um, I think, you know, just practice, because even like a great singer can can kind of lose that that momentum or lose what they built up, even if they don't practice it. So it's kind of just about like what your, what skill set you're building and just to continue to build it, you know? Mm -hmm. And and you were someone that was really navigating through the SoundCloud era and you saw someone, one of your inspirations was LA and wanting to connect with the people that he worked with. Did you eventually get to meet him ever throughout your crossing so far and link up? Did you ever message him and try to reach out? So, um, funny enough i've i've met him a few times but not necessarily on like a collaboration i think one time was like a long time ago he had like an appearance somewhere and i like came and i said hi i talked to him and then another time i do happen to uh, know one of his friends so i met him in like a social setting but like you know briefly or whatever um i haven't but i you know i'd love to and maybe who knows maybe 2023 is the year a nice feature in the works. And, and I know you would love to work with right, Frank Ocean maybe. if he ever gets back on the microphone again. I mean, <laughs> right. I mean, I, I don't know. I hear new music might be coming. So I don't know. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. <laughs> he, he's been leaving us hanging here for since Blonde. As a Frank Ocean fan, are you someone that prefers Channel Orange or Blonde? Which album is your go to for Frank Ocean? You know, it's so weird because I could sit here and I'll sit here and tell you, like, I love channel orange i love nostalgia ultra i listen to blonde the most though so it's like weird because i'm like i i could sit here and tell you like i like channel orange is my favorite but like i listen to blonde the most so i don't know i just they're all like and then i also listen to all the random singles too so <laughs> <laughs> with, with all the apps that are coming out now tiktok because soundcloud was the major way to get into music back in the day a couple of years ago but now you have tiktok and instagram so what's the way and approach that you've kind of had to adapt to how tiktok is out now and all these other apps are emerging so how do you now once you master one app how do you go and master the other um you know i think it's hard it's just trial and error um I think for me, like TikTok will definitely be a big focus for me next year. Um, I've done some stuff, but just trying to cultivate because I don't necessarily, I can't necessarily say I want to be known for like being like the funny one or like the this or the that. I'd rather be known for my music. So just trying to figure out how to push that more, you know. And I'm the same way, especially with with what I do as far as journalism, because I always say this in order to survive in this climate, you need clout almost. Clout is what makes you. But how do you make it without the clout in this day and age in your mind? Because you're doing it already. I mean, I just say people always say, like, it's it's the hard work that will prevail. Um, You know, it doesn't necessarily matter always about the talent level. Uh, So many people are talented, but it's about those who, like, continue to work hard and and that see success you know Mm -hmm. in networking out in LA because in Jersey was when you really first had the experience of recording a studio so how did that empower you the first time being in that studio atmosphere and that setting of hearing your voice because I know most of the times when artists start out they're starting to record in their own personal space but to hear your voice actually in a studio that had to transcend everything for you 
Um, yeah, I mean, I loved it. I mean, the first thing I did was like the very first, I did two songs. I did like Alicia Keys Unthinkable, I think, and then a cover, and then I did like my own. Was it the party next door of, Drake like, thing I heard about? Yeah, the party yeah. next door. That was like during the same session, and then that was kind of grew its own legs and and everybody seemed to love it. And then like I put it out on SoundCloud and that was my first, you know, intro to what I'd be doing for the next rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And you've spoken about it before. You want to work with a lot of producers and engineers, especially female artists in the industry. Who's someone that pops in your mind that you would love to work with that you think that would it would be a benefit to both artists in which you you you, could, you see what an artist it could be up and coming. It could be someone that's out there already. What's something that you feel as though you'd make a great team? Man, that's hard. I mean, because like benefit to both artists, it's like it depends on, I guess, where we're at, you know, in our careers. Um, on my recent project, I did collab um, with a friend of mine named uh, Kia Harper, and I think she's amazing. Uh, I hope everybody checks her out. And she's also similar with me. And we've also been grinding out here in L.A. for a while. And, you know, just I think if people love good R&B music, I, I would love to do more collabs with, with her, too. And speaking of R&B, because with hip hop and the hip hop culture that we're in, we always have the ghost writers and R&B. A lot of R&B artists look to songwriters for ideas. And you recently had the Nas Hip Boy thing and Quentin Miller apparently helped out with a verse and gave an idea out there. So why is it important for R&B singers to have a songwriter and why it, it, it shouldn't matter as much when you have someone throwing out ideas, especially in the world of R&B compared to hip hop? I mean, I feel like in both in both spaces, I think there's like uh, it, it's entertainment at the end of the day. And it's also about like getting the best song. So often people, you know, if you don't have if maybe you're the most genius rapper or singer or whatever. But if you don't have a great hook, I mean, then like, you know what I mean? What do you really have? You don't have a great song. So I think it's like important to collaborate, to have writers. Um, I I hope to collab with way more writers this year I write so many things like by myself but um I think like your best works are often like when you have multiple people and ideas in the room how would it be if you were able to get the opportunity to work with Babyface or even Jermaine Dupri that would be amazing I mean to be honest like at that point I probably wouldn't even want to write anything I just feel like <laughs> I don't Take it away. Like, I don't know. Like, this is this is your masterpiece of your world. I'm living in it, you know? Uh, that would be legendary. But anything's out there for 2023. You never know what you're going to achieve. What were some things that you were surprised that you achieved in the year of 2022? I'm surprised that I achieved in 2022. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm just happy that I'm, I'm able to kind of be consistent and just consistently put out stuff. Um i i've seen a lot of growth within this last like two years so i'm just you know looking forward to hitting more more million marks on on all these platforms and stuff like that <laughs> and just keep going from there california lies was a song that really stuck out to me because and everyone it's either you move to la or you move to new york so when you were going back to la did this song really come into your mind and especially with the the reference to OJ was insane <laughs> that you want to get away from your <laughs> problems you. and go out to LA. Was this that, was that was something that was going through your mind when you were trying to get back when you were in Jersey? Um, I mean, kind of, I think like I take inspiration from like different points in my life um, and different situations that happen, but I don't know. I think like sometimes it just comes subconsciously and it was just something that kind of, moved me and went with the music and in, in my head <laughs> and digging deeper further in the california lies what are the the lies of california when we look at it because from new york they always say that it's the city that sleeps it sleeps from my experience being there so that's a lie already yeah but, <laughs> what are some of the lies about california in which you've been out there so far i mean you've been there your whole life pretty much but what are some of the lies yeah, I mean, moving to LA, like, I mean, not everything is glamorous, right? Like you think like the all, all of LA is like this beautiful Hollywood glimmer and lights. And it's like, no, there's like a lot of homeless people. There's a lot of trash, like, you know, um, and then like, I don't know, just like, 
a lot of people think they're just gonna come and just be famous or like like me when I thought I was gonna just come and everybody was gonna just want to do stuff for me and like that's not how it works everyone's trying to survive out here <laughs> in order to get to where you're at now what were some of the first stepping stones that you really had to take to get to to where you're at now as far as being on the grind time being your own boss and making a name for yourself um I think like I really just had to learn how to do for myself. Like I had to learn to pivot because music costs so much money. So, you know, at one point in time, it's just like, you got to learn how to record yourself. Like you got, I mean, at least, at least a decent amount, even if you go into a studio, it's great to like know what you're doing there and not like wasting time and money. So I think just like learning along the way definitely was like the stepping stones I needed to continue. And especially you see the navigation process now and what you built your career up to this far and into your newest project. And it's kind of funny how it all, so everything always surrounds by money. And I, I do think money is the root of all evil. I really do. So married <laughs> to the money, explain to the audience who may not have heard this track, what you're trying to convey with that song and, and, and the importance of money, because I think in order to, it, you need to be careful when you have a lot of money because you see people could go crazy, bad investments that are just not, Care, they're pretty much careless with, with their income. So what would you say that you're trying to convey if for the people that didn't tune into that track? Um, so, so that track was just kind of like, I often write about like love and love songs. And, um, and I guess it was just kind of like a different way to approach a love song. It was basically kind of talking about a relationship and just saying kind of like, you know, well, like, this didn't work out there's no it's not going to work out and it's okay because my money never let me down so like I need to focus on my not necessarily the money but like the dream the drive what I'm trying to you know achieve and not worry about like a situation that I need to let go <laughs> moving out to LA because this is important for a lot of artists listening right now Moving out to LA, what is the best way to start to, to generate some sort of income from yourself based on what you love? Would you say it's do, going to shows? What would you say is the number one income money maker for yourself as an artist if you really are serious about the passion and what you've already achieved? Um, I mean, man, it's so hard because it can come like if you're really good at sell, selling things, it could come from your merch. Um, if you're really good. Uh, it, it, sometimes it can come from your streams or just your catalog, right? It, eventually, if you put up, put on enough good things and, and continue to push it and promote it, you start to see money from like someone who likes you and then was like, I just want to hear every single thing that you've ever put out, you know? Um, but I would recommend, you know, a lot of people out here in LA while they're striving for their dreams have, you know, and it's okay. Just find a job and then like give, you know, whatever you can to your job, but like, you know what your real passion is and give a hundred percent to that as well. Exactly. Where we left off is this title, is this pretty much the branch of where you're leaving off from your most recent project? Is it basically just tying everything, connecting everything together like a bridge? Kind of, it's kind mm -hmm. of like, um, so I had a project uh, called unfortunate mm -hmm. and um, it, it's kind of in a way like, going back into that project and it's kind of like okay because i have like a series where i do silhouette um so for, what the second yeah, one i tuned in there yeah so like i just kind of wanted it to be like okay from the previous uh thing that wasn't silhouette like unfortunate this is kind of like where we left things off in my like love life <laughs> <laughs> And Garden Fire, that's another one that we can look back on as well. So when we really go down the discography, where do you see the evolution process heading for you next into 2023 as far as your, your upcoming project? Because it's always, everyone's always looking forward to what do you have next on the way? I but where, does, where we have left off leading to next? So um, a couple of things. I mean, I have songs and stuff that I haven't put out, but I really do want to spend time on this project. Yeah. And so I definitely can, you can expect a lot of visuals, um, a lot of, uh, you know, possibly maybe remixes. Uh, and just I want to focus on collaborating this year and, and seeing maybe I can like collaborate with a few a few new individuals. Mm. It's someone in mind. I know Masego, someone LA we mentioned before Frank Ocean, who, who's who's someone you love to and have the mm -hmm. actual potential that you know that you're, you're really confident about you may have crossed some paths, know a manager here, who, who's someone that you're confident yeah. about? Um, I really want to get a song with a girl uh, in 
she is in Canada and her name is Charmaine. She's a rapper. She's okay. A yeah. 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 She's been so, on the show. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we met and she's amazing. And, and uh, we haven't talked in a little bit, but you know, as soon as I get that song for her, it's coming her way. Um, and then uh, there's an artist, his name is Jermaine and he's an R and B singer out here in Los Angeles also. So definitely I know I've, I've spoken with a few people and I can't wait to like really get in the studio. It's going to be happening for 2023, but we really got to get into to everything else that you have going here as far as performances you putting for your own tour here for this project, even just even if it's just local. Man, maybe. I mean, you know, we'll see as the visuals roll out and uh, hopefully more more fans and more supporters and stuff roll out. Hopefully that that can be in my future for 2023. Mm-hmm. Have you thought about expanding your brand even further, even thinking about doing acting? Is there anything else, any other interests that you're looking forward to venturing? Especially, I mean, you're out in L.A. That's the the land of opportunity in the entertainment space. You know, I think maybe if something's like presented to me, but I'm like super focused on my music and stuff. So I think like to to pivot and try to like go after that, because I feel like sometimes it's a hard industry to get into also. So I'm like, I don't want to take focus away. I'm like fully focused on my music and that's where I want it to be. Mm -hmm. Now, I do want to touch on this because it's important. Do you ever see the, especially the, you could say R&B or music landscape becoming more female dominated? Because when we look at the industry, we look at the big names right now. I mean, (laughs) it's amazing to really look at it just to see how it's evolved over time. But do you ever see it turning over to a female dominated industry? Um, I mean... It's definitely possible. I think there's more and more females um, coming out every day, um, doing the work, you know, that it takes to to keep pushing and, and moving forward. So I would hope that we start to see at least an equal amount. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Especially, you know, with everything going on with the Roe v. Wade being overturned. So it, it all impacts everything. But to me, I think SZA released one of the best projects this year. So you're starting to see... Yeah that turn now and i think it's time for a turn you know let let the women have a have a change here exactly yeah because i know with hip-hop it's always male dominant but they never bring up the foxy browns the little kims they never put them in the same tier as a Busta rhymes or someone they whoever they'd have in their top 10 so it's got to be more diverse yeah for sure and i'm i'm hoping that you know as these years progress we see more and more Mm -hmm. when we look at female artists who do you think transcended and and gaining respect even if you look at it from the r&b perspective who's someone that you think is oh transcended the r&b genre to make it that females have a voice as well um i mean i think definitely like those crossover artists i think uh SZA for sure right i feel Mm -hmm. like she's considered in in the hip-hop space as well um i think you have people who like janae aiko um, I, I love when you can be like, uh, I don't know, like when your subject matter is a little bit more so that like males and females can, can listen. Cause that's what I try to do is make it like as unisex as possible. Mm-hmm. I, I think Aaliyah too. I think she was a big trendsetter. Yeah. Seems, just the way that she, from the outfits with the Tommy Hill figures, the jerseys, yeah. the way she <laughs> transcended the fashion space too. <laughs> I know. No, for sure. She was definitely like the leading, the leading lady for that. Yeah, no, it's unfortunate that that we lost her so young because we she had a huge impact within the first three albums that she had. You saw it. And it it's not even a question. I know. She was amazing. I didn't learn about her really until like after she passed. And then I really like got into Aaliyah because I was, you know, super young. But yeah, no, I, I think she definitely changed the game and left a mark that like still to this day cannot be, you know, cannot be met yeah. she's so. always trending on twitter i mean every time i go to twitter i know <laughs> she's always trending i'm like that's just how it goes to show you how powerful that she really is just as not even just as a, a musician but just as a, a figure yeah she was just she was really legendary and i think there's so many artists that have sprung from her and her sound and, and, and when we look at your career, Rich by 30, how do you want people to remember you even before the age of 30, once you're on that next step that you want to be? How do you want people to remember Brandy Hayes? When we hear that name, what do you want people to think of? Um, I just want to be, like, respected and as, a, as an artist, and, and I want to 
show my my art and share my art to the world and I think that's like probably the most important thing to me and that's going to be happening soon big things are on the way Brandy Hayes is there anything else you would let the audience know that we we didn't touch on tonight um no but follow me everywhere at uh Brandy Hayes uh Brandy with a Y H-A-Z-E and then on TikTok at the Brandy Hayes and you already know what it is. Brandy Hayes, thank you for coming on the show. I really appreciate the time and everything that you're putting into your crap because, in my opinion, the labels need to be really hunting out here and getting the real talent that's yes. out here, especially in the R&B lane, too. And you're one of the top names exactly. to watch. Thank you so, yeah. so much. Of course. And, and anytime you want to come back on the show, you're always welcome. And I, I, happy holidays. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your night. And I look forward to what you achieve in next year, 2023. For sure. You too. Yep. Have a good night and peace out. All right. You too. Yep. All right.